on my radio show, Life Matters. That's um, Kate and I up here. Um, and because I interview authors every week, you know, I get a lot of books. Most of them I just uh, skim, never really read. So like all the other books I get, I set this book on my desk on a big pile of other books. Sad but true. <laughs> Sorry, son. But uh, <clears throat> so there it sat until a few, actually just a few days before the interview. And then one night I picked it up. And within a few pages, I realized my mistake. I had really waited far too long to drink the nectar of this incredible story. I, I really was taken totally by surprise. Uh, I have the privilege of interviewing many wonderful authors, international, internationally known authors, who write really fabulous books. But I found in my hands a truly extraordinary story. And it was extraordinary not because it uh, you know, not because it proposed some new cutting-edge theory or, um, you know, some, some new discovery. But it was extraordinary for the innocence of the author's heart. It was extraordinary for his one-pointed devotion to realizing life's highest truth it, it wasn't a new story, it was rather a very ancient and eternal story. It was so beautiful. Whether he was sitting on the banks of a holy river, or deep in meditation, or listening to the exposition of some sage or yogi, or caught in the coils of a giant cobra, or having some mongoose roost in his hair, uninvited. All these things that really happened. Or, or he was hounded by rabid dogs and even an impassioned temptress. Still, in every experience, he squeezed the nectar of self-knowledge. And so that is if you read the book, you'll know that that is how he has certainly lived these past 40 years. 